Welcome to the Porn Stars or People podcast. Uh, I'm Dan Frigolette, your host. I'm here with Whitney Morgan. Hi. Thank you for meeting me. Thank you for no doing problem. this. Um, I'm here in Orlando. I have mixed feelings. I'm sorry. <laughs> they're, they're very much. They're very much the thing that 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 are that are that are stuck in my system right now. Technically, you're not really in Orlando. You're in the land of the mouse. He owns this whole area. Yes, right here. that's <laughs> the problem that I'm having. I feel very stranded. So when you're on the the Vegas Strip, at least it's like multiple corporate interests, and it's like, okay, look. You know, all right, I'll give a little bit of money to MGM. I'll give a little money to, to you know, whoever owns this one, whatever. You can get out and walk. You're like, all right, now yeah. I want to I want to move up. Uh, it's maybe 25, 50 feet. I'll, I'll make it. I'll make it yeah. here. You're stuck at like a compound. Yeah. Yeah. So you're paying fifty dollars for fish, you know, in Vegas on the strip for no reason and six dollars for coffee. Uh, and then here it's just like they own seven parks and holy shit, it is seven. And it's just like, and it's just, and it is, it's a complex. This is what I thought was. I think they're opening a Star Wars one as a separate. Maybe it's a I think it might be. Actually, that sounds amazing, though. It does. One of my friends is a Jedi, so. Wow, that's awesome. She's doing all the training right now for it. Oh, that's really cool. That's legit. Like, she's like, there's real training. Oh, that's crazy. Um, But yeah, so uh, it's, you just, and they shut, they like, they like boated me around. I don't know, man. I got to figure out. You're a so prisoner here. <laughs> I really, that's how it feels. I really need to get in the car and get out of here today. But okay, so what, where would you go to? Do you want me to, to throw you in the trunk? Yeah. I, I have a hatchback, so yeah, it'll get, be extra <laughs> amusing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, sneak me out. Sneak me off the compound. No, where, where would I go if I wanted to check out Orlando, get the real vibe of the place? I, I mean, proper downtown Orlando mm-hmm. is a good 30, 45 minutes yeah, from here. I'm fine with that. You're good with that? Yep. Um, get me off this fucking island i would check out i mean if you really want to know the old school downtown orlando check out church street okay you have a lot of little old school bars down there watering holes there's a couple comedy clubs down there yeah. um a lot of good brunch places nice a lot of good places to drink eat uh some drag shows yeah all the stuff yeah cool yeah so how did you are you from this area I am from North Orlando. Okay. So you've been here the whole time. Born and raised. Yeah. Is this the kind of town that it feels hard to leave? I wouldn't say that because I have a lot of friends that have moved all over the country, some out of the country. Um, I like living just outside of Orlando, so I don't have to deal with all this chaos of tourism. Um Kind of be in my own little compound, my own little porn compound. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Not to mention, Florida is pretty porn and fetish heavy, so yeah. I do have a great opportunity to move and work throughout the state. Right, and right. being just just outside of the the chaos of, of you know Disney and downtown Orlando, I'm pretty much within a two to three hour radius of any nice. adult company here. Yeah. Yeah, that was I, I was scooting back and forth between Tampa and here. Tampa's what the the fetish, yeah, fetish town from what they were trying to tell me. Um, so wh- I, that's interesting. And, the, and these are the things. So these are the hot spots that I've hit with the podcast was uh, Vegas, L.A., and here. What is it? About? I mean, these are three warm places. Does the weather have anything to do with why these are the porn capitals? That's a really good question. I mean. I- my family is all from Chicago, so grew up in, in with black ice and snowstorms, and yeah. from all the horror stories that I've had to hear, you don't you're kind of lethargic on those cold seasons. Yeah, and you don't want to go out, you don't want to do anything. Right. So I think living somewhere where it's uh, a lot warmer, girls can get out, they can drive, they can get from point A to point B. They have a lot more motivation. Yeah, versus going fuck. There's there's three feet of snow out here. There's a lot oh. less excuse here. Yeah. Unless we get a hurricane, there's a lot less excuse to be like, well, I'm not going to make it to suck some dick today. It's yeah. Just not well, it happen. is interesting, though, because I have found and not that not that comedians are a whole lot better or actors, but I have found that this is a particular sect of people that uh, don't necessarily care about my plans or my schedule because there's a lot of cancellations that happen. Yeah. Very last minute. I want to say a lot in kind of the in the entertainment industry yeah. all around since you work for yourself yeah predominantly i mean you do have certain things you know, like if you have to perform at a club you have to perform right. at a club otherwise that club's gonna be like fuck you next time you're here right and same thing in the adult fetish industry you don't show up for a shoot now 
it also is it depends on that poll if you are a very successful girl and you have a large fan base that really really wants you there the producer's gonna put up with some shit yeah I too. I've put up with yeah. some girls that because I, I from time to time I, I shoot a lot of custom content. So when the fans are like, "I want this model," you got to do it. I'm you like, have to get them. Fuck. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah, it's tough. She you're canceled on me four times already, but mm, you're paying a lot of money for me to have her over. Fine, I'll put up with it again. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. But is when you have a fan base and a following, you have the opportunity to be an asshole. Yeah. Well, <laughs> here's what I found uh, from running. I, was, I also run the Hoboken Comedy Festival. This year, I had uh, uh, the, the I won't mention names, but a couple <laughs> people didn't show up. I won't up. either. <laughs> and here, and then this, the me not mentioning mentioning names, I think, is what generally happens. Is like if this if this comedian is a powerhouse, uh, and they don't show up. Uh, but they're so good that they're going to keep me. It's like, I don't have any recourse, really. Like, what am I going to tell the community that so-and-so didn't show up and, like, complain about it that I look like a whiny I'm not going to lie. Sometimes, sometimes I've I've started to type it into Twitter, be yeah. like, so I had, you know, $600 worth of customs, but I had to be refunded because Miss Whatever didn't show up. It's like, don't be that girl. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it, become, it's like it becomes more a reflection on you, but it's mm-hmm. like, so... It's just tough. So you just hope that, you know, eventually Karma. that that. Yeah. Or <laughs> yeah. Or it's not, or they're going to do that enough times to the wrong person that it, that that that, you know, that that spin will come around. But that is what we're always waiting. for. Yeah. So I don't because I was trying. That was the other thing about like, this. This tour fell a little flat for me because uh, you guys were going through the, the, the 14 hurricanes in a row. Right. When I was trying to solidify we plans here. You need to have some more. Yeah. We know we need to have some more because Hurricane Whitney is is <laughs> actually in oh, queue it this year. <laughs> it's been in the queue a few <laughs> times and we've never made it this far. Oh, There's I only see. one time in my in my lifetime living here that we've made it all the way through the alphabet yeah. and they started with alpha beta. Yeah. And I'm like, we're so close. We only need like six more, I think. That's crazy. Come on. <sighs> That's crazy. Give um, me this. So wait, yeah, so I don't know how that uh, you guys from down here, you know how that works. Us up north, we don't we don't get any, so we never know. So, you guys got to hit us hit a little bit of Sandy way back. Oh when. yeah yeah no we get wrecked but we're but we're always pretending like it's not gonna have anything to do with us and yeah. we don't and we don't bother to take the time to learn about hurricanes. We don't know what we don't know. We're like, is it on the Fujita scale? It's the Fujita thing. <laughs> uh, no, so we so so what do they do? So the first one that that hits in this, in the year is named with an A name. Um, once it's become a certain wind strength, yeah. whether or not it hits us, even if it just sits out there in the Atlantic, just twirling around. I want to say it was Jose did like three turns and yeah. they kept joking around saying that Jose's drunk because <laughs> it was doing all these different little turns. Um, once it becomes a certain wind strength, they name it and it has to have like the cyclone actually going in an yeah. eye in it. But the but the naming start process with starts with A, goes all the way through. All the way through, sometimes Z. I think they're running out of like X's and Q's. Yeah. And they're like. Wait. So they won't rename, and I don't even know who the they is. They won't rename a storm the based National on another name. Hurricane. It's got an acronym. It's for weather. Yeah. So they won't. Not so if there man. was a Hurricane Xavier, <laughs> which I feel like there was, then they won't ever. They won't ever reuse it. If it was bad enough to cause maximum damage, like there will never be another Hurricane Maria. There they will won't never be another it. Harvey. There will never be another Irma. Yeah. Um, everybody, was, they were comparing Irma to Hurricane Andrew. Right. Which there will never be another Hurricane Andrew then either. And if it's bad enough to cause maximum damage, if it was just like. I'm gonna kind of skirt the side of Florida and freak y'all out just a little bit right here. Yeah, so like, which like Hurricane Matthew did. They're gonna be like, well, we'll have another Matthew. So who do you want to be? You do you want you want yours to be Matthew? Do you if it's Hurricane Whitney? Do you want to just come up? I don't want to fuck out? shit up. I want to oh, fuck do. shit up. Yeah, <laughs> I know that is absolutely terrible, especially growing up in this state and having friends. You want to be the worst houses. disaster South Florida's ever seen. I mean, I want that shit to split Florida up through the middle. Oh, go all the way up. Oh, yeah, like Irma was supposed to. <laughs> Fuck. That's hilarious. It'll, it'll never make it to W. I realize that, so I can just keep threatening. Yeah. Knock on Watch wood. out for <laughs> Hurricane Whitney 2029. No, no, I mean, we'll get there. We'll, we'll, we're definitely going to get there. This, so, yeah, it's only been getting worse. Yeah, this thing, this thing is out of control. And it's just so funny the way everybody's it's like when you when you were young and you spoke to old people and you uh, and you like 
the way that they viewed the world, you were always like, oh, it's just like they're all bitter or whatever. Yeah. They think they have some information that they don't. Now and then the older you get, them. yeah, you realize like all because because it's just so fun to watch. So from like, from being kids to them talking about global warming and people being like, it's a garbage, it's nothing, it's not real. Yeah. And then now, you know, I'm in my 30s and to see people that said one thing 25 years ago now saying other things uh, with the same authority that they were pretending to say the other. It's just it's just incredible how uh how much bullshit sort of everything it makes is. you feel old doesn't it oh it's, uh, it but sucks. it's great if there's like a, there's like a reverence <laughs> to it you know they, I, I used to ask my grandfather questions and he would answer with with definitives there was no like there was no shake uh there was no you know you couldn't you couldn't sway him on either end so those conversations would kind of be short short and yeah and you're it's like you're like no, no i want to i want to delve into like, like the, no, the, the the issue and he's just like no it's just not gonna this is the way it is he says the one sentence and he's like, this is the way it is. And, uh, and that's You'll the learn end of one the story. day, kid. And you're like, damn it. Damn it, Grandpa. So that's interesting. So uh, so where's the rest of your family? You said they're Chicago? Is that what you um, said? They're all from Chicago. Yeah. They're uh, My parents live here in the greater Orlando area. And then I've got aunts and uncles kind of spewing throughout the Chicago land area and the southeast here. Nice. Nice. So Florida's a yeah, Florida's a whole other culture of 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 creature. It's a lot of transplants though. I, yeah. I I'm one of the few like born and raised that I know of. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, this area, the only people that I remember from this area were were heavily tied to um to well, cuz the <laughs> so my age gap if if you were kind of growing up in this area, I guess the the big commerce for a little while in entertainment was was boy bands because they just kept kept shitting out boy yeah. bands. So I knew various people that were connected in some way to multiple boy bands, uh, and by uh, connected. And I if mean you head down to that downtown Orlando area, you may or may not run to a couple one of the old ones that just kind of <laughs> hangs out. Just LFOs walking around, yeah. or uh, a couple of the O Town guys. A little bigger than that. Yeah. Oh, you're, we're talking specifics. You, you're literally you're literally telling me to go bump into Joey Fatone. He 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 meanders around downtown <laughs> area somewhere. Yeah. He's uh he's this is an interesting thing that this this entertainment thing because part of the reason I started this podcast is because people in your industry are making their way into my industry. I have noticed that, and I'm kind of. I won't name any names, but we did interview one on Demon Seed, yeah. and uh, we put her on the spot. Tell us some jokes, and yeah. she just refused. Just bombed right like, there. Oh, you got nothing. All yeah. Right. Well, All right. <laughs> that's never what you want to do to anybody is ask them for immediately for a joke. But but we were interviewing her about her transition. <laughs> so I get that. Uh, well, here's what I find interesting about comedy in this day and age mm -hmm. is basically if you have a face that people recognize, they'll just let you do comedy. You can be a guy who stapled your balls to something. Ooh, that uh, sounds fun. And you get to do comedy. You can be Joey Fatone has been showing up a ton in that Impractical Jokers show. He's friends with those guys. So everybody's sort of slow transitioning into comedy because it's, uh, it's like an open door. So does this mean a lot of the comedians are going to slow transition in the porn industry? I wish it, I wish it works <laughs> both ways. I wish I, could, I wish I could sneak into that door. Uh, just without really You're a in lot the right of, state now. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Well, I've been hanging out with the right people too. Basically, you know, basically one of these podcasts can get weird and then, you know, and then turn into a whole other episode. But, um, no, it's just, you know, comedians are, are maniacal about comedy. So we, you know, when we see, As you should be. when we, yeah, when we see kind of people, you know, uh, sidestepping in, we get a little disappointed. Can't say I blame you. I would feel the same way if yeah. I were, you know, Funny enough to be a comedian. Well, this quick witted. Th I'm not quick witted. Quick witted. <laughs> but you don't. I mean, the, some of the best comedians don't have to be quick witted because they because they're they're just working hard mm -hmm. and they're figuring it out. Um, I do, I do find it interesting. I've I think I've asked this question to a couple different people. The way I think comedians judge other comedians is a little bit harsher than a lot of people in a lot of other industries do. It seems like people in your industry are not necessarily. Looking at new people and looking at their work and going, they're never going to make it. Because it's just like, there's like more of an attitude of just moving it forward. You don't have to worry about it, what other people are doing. It's a good split. <laughs> it's a good split. If they're going after, because I, since I shoot predominantly fetish driven work. Yeah. Um, you look at ones that are coming in and kind of cannibalizing in what you do. Yeah. If I, I, I shoot a wide range of fetishes, but if they were 
let's say foot fetish specifically because uh, if they were specifically going after foot fetishism and they don't have a personal fe- foot fetish and they didn't know a lot about the psyche that goes with it and the fan base then yeah we we okay. should talk and we butcher them and yeah. it's like okay well okay i like that that's good um it just it's, it's a case-by-case basis yeah. but there certainly are instances where we'll go mm, but li- but the things that you said that's funny because the things that you said actually are 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 the mindset of comedians were like and you know it is it authentic yeah um to who they are uh or you know or are they going after something that that doesn't represent them is it uh are they and you're saying cannibalizing but for us it's like are they are they hitting on concepts or are they they using uh lines that maybe someone else has used are they encroaching on our particular jokes and things like that so that's an it's the exact same mindset that's interesting I never would have expected that. That's great. I mean, I understand pretty much everything has been done or said before, but you at least got to make it your own yeah. a little bit. That's interesting. That's what um that, that that's a that's a shared idea with the cuz I talked to a lot of foot girls on this on this trip. So that is that is a shared idea is to come up with a new foot concept is uh uh really something that that people are looking for and, and it is one thing it's, it's the number one fetish in, in the world yeah. across the board is foot fetishism it's extremely common yeah and so that's always a go-to for new people in this industry yeah. is well it, it seems easy yeah and maybe no, it's, it's and, really like, and no, there's there's little certain points that no, it's not as easy if you want to capture the clientele that is really into it. Yeah. If you just want to pop up a camera and wiggle your toes in there and <laughs> not know what to say, right? Sure, by all means, go bananas, but <laughs> <laughs> might not be successful. Yeah, well, and so I, maybe maybe people also think that it's the way they can get in because it's because when I guess when you go fetish, there's not a uh, a guaranteed route to have to be nude or have to mm-hmm. do you know any th- any sort of penetration or anything like that so i think that's sort of the people's uh well it's, it's funny because it's a foot fetish but that's that's their sort of tiptoe Ha-ha. into the business <laughs> uh so yeah I, comedy doesn't Say it's have the way they like much. to get their feet wet oh that's funny <laughs> <laughs> that was bad <laughs> <laughs> i like that one um so what else okay so outside of that um what are your like life uh, philosophies that keep you stable? Philosophy. Yeah, I know it doesn't have to be anything. I mean, it could, you know, <laughs> uh, I would say I say to people like, you know, it could be just the way you eat. It could be, you know, it's like it, my, I think my my you know notion on life is just ev- everybody else is. F- I mean, I'm pu- I'm full of shit. You're full of shit, and everybody else around us is full of shit. We're just making it, you know, one day at a time. Yeah, and that kind of <laughs> and then and that kind of keeps me. Uh, in a good position mentally, and then also I, I just try to be honest, whether it, whether it be brutal or not. I just sometimes I, I and sometimes I'm I'm a little bit too harsh for people because I just want people that I don't understand the idea of lying to people. I just never got it. See, I'm becoming more and more like that, where I'm like, mm, I've always been too nice. I've always been too kind. Let's just be really brutally honest yeah. with people. I'm seeing that with myself more. The the older I become, the more I'm like, nah, let's squash this shit yeah. now. And it doesn't have to be brutal, but people take things the wrong way. Like, outside of this show, I did a show for basically uh, people in a community. They're pretending like it's not a retirement community, but it was, I mean, it was it was same kind of thing. It was like a, co- it was like a compound. And there was just one bar on that compound. These people all kind of live in this sort of like shared environment. Everything's the same. And I just kept making this joke about how they're... Uh, um, how they're free to leave whenever they want, right? And they, they, you know, so they, so because of how funny that was to them, it was very clear that there's something about this place. And I go to leave. This woman uh, left uh, during, I think, the opening act uh, and maybe popped in a couple times when I was on. So it was just a guy open for me, and then I did like an hour. And I had a great show. I had a fantastic time with these people. And it, it was just, it, the beginning of it felt like fish out of water because people didn't know what to expect. And it was the wrong, um, I don't know, the wrong room. Yeah. Uh, physically, the way they set it up, who, who, oh, you know, okay. whatever, whatever. And so, but we, but we made a good show out of it. And so I walk outside. I'm going to leave. This woman says, um, "You guys both are great. Uh, wrong audience." And I just, I go, "Well, that's not true." I said, "It wasn't the wrong audience. Uh, I had a fantastic show. You left too early, but we had a great time." And then for some, and I thought that was like a, you know, just a nice and honest thing to re- respond back. Well, I don't know if it's nice, but. 
her response to me saying that to her was like she just like it took it hit her for a second and then she just goes fuck you <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> which I thought was, which I thought was great. It's like going to get my bag, and then the other two people are standing outside. I come back out, and I kind of heard it as I was going in. I go, did she just say fuck you? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. I don't get, uh, you know, the the pleasantries. I don't. I don't have. I don't care for. Sorry, this whole thing was about what what your what your life philosophy is. I don't really have one. That's the sad <laughs> thing. I really don't. I'm like, you know what? I'm just trying to do the best I can and have a good time at this. Yeah. I had the liberty of being able to choose a, a career that I enjoy and, you know, make good money out of it, make good friends, yeah. uh, become friends with a lot of my fans. And I, at moments in time, I do miss having a quote unquote vanilla job or a regular job sometimes for that level just love of that word down here. Vanilla. Yeah. I, I think it's a fetish thing and not yeah. even really a porn thing. I think it's a yeah. fetish. thing. I haven't heard anybody say that word as much as down here. I really think that that's, it, it's a fetish thing. Yeah. Because that's how that's how you guys are. So you know, comedians call other people civilians. So that's that's your guys' word for everything the outside of you. people call um, regular people civilians yeah, a lot yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, the fetish people always go with vanilla. Vanilla. That's interesting. I like that. I do like that. But yeah, but but it's but it's been. I've just the first couple times people said, I was like, yeah, yeah, and then now it's. But it's a trend. It's a full trend. I've had to explain it to a few people before. They're like, "Are you being racist?" I'm like, yeah. "No, it's just you get." I have a one friend that calls it um, chocolate cherry or vanilla cherry. Yeah. If he's like, well, I'm feeling a little bit kinky, yeah. but not too much. Oh, I'm feeling real kinky. Then it's the chocolate cherry. And I was like, I like that. It's That's different. interesting. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. I, and you know what? And and if you are being racist with vanilla, which is which is basically shitting on white people, have at it. <laughs> they, You know, it's... Uh, we got. We can't defend white people too. Uh, not anymore. This is like we're, we're like I. This was what was interesting in Epcot when I'm going through the thing. They're they're going through ancient Egypt and and they're going through uh, the Renaissance and they're doing all these things and then they just skip right ahead to uh, to we won the Civil War and it was like a black guy in the printing press and I was like we're just gonna skip over that whole chunk I'm of time trying to huh? figure out the whole period what? of time in America where we just fucking enslaved a people i'm trying i don't know if disney would allow you to b to build all that back there they're just like no nah. it's crazy so you know what so if we're so if vanilla is making fun of white people that they deserve it that's my point i mean it could have started off like that and the finished <laughs> people just took it to a whole different direction <laughs> yeah but no vanilla vanilla i think but vanilla seems offensive especially because people outside of it because then it seems like uh you guys talk about it like everybody else just everywhere having sex is just boring I mean, that's kind of how the angle that it's going <laughs> right, towards is, right. is, well, you know, what's your favorite kind of ice cream? Vanilla. Oh, well, you're boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I like vanilla ice cream and I like to choke girls. So it's, you know, it's uh, that's a good line. <laughs> I'm going to try to remember that. So, no, you know what? You know, what's weird is I don't uh, I talk about choking on stage and I don't I don't like choking as much as I just like. The reaction. Doing things to people that they want me to do, right? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, like no, that totally makes sense. And so that's that's one of the things I talk about on stage is that like, uh, guy, we'll do anything. Guys yeah. will do anything. We don't we don't care what it is. We don't we don't we don't judge it. Told. We don't separate it. Yeah. Well, they don't, girls don't want to tell us either. We gotta we gotta we gotta figure it out. That's the hard part. Vanilla girls don't want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so we gotta figure out what the thing is, and it doesn't matter what it is. One of my lines and one of my acts is, dude, we'll put cigarettes out in your chest. We don't care. No. Whatever it is, we'll do it. Any, any part of your body, we'll fuck it. We don't care. Just gotta let us know. Gotta let us know. So I'm guessing there was a choking story behind that somewhere. No, so I do. So yeah, I have, I have a bit about how you have to choke a girl without choking her. You have to do this sort of. Oh like yeah, there's a certain way that you have to, to wrap to your hands around the neck and not, you know, not too hard, but just hard enough. You know, where it freaks her out yeah. a little bit. Well, and when you meet a girl, you gotta you gotta do a move because you don't want she doesn't want you to know or think that she's the choke girl. So you gotta do the whole thing. So, you know, it's just a it's a constant battle. <laughs> yeah, you vanilla kids. With the vanilla people. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, With so us more so BDSM girls, you just got to look for the bruises. Be like, aha. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> if I can go that far. I, I did. I dated a girl once who wanted me to punch her in the face. And I, that was that was that was beyond my level. I've beyond my capabilities. Girls, like that a little too far for me. I'm going to you know, take yeah. it back a notch. But that's a little. I, 
I I worry more about the future of my sex life if I go that route because as what a are you dude, gonna do next? Right, <laughs> as a dude, it's everything is is uh it it, it uh what's it called it it, it accumulates. You bring it to those different heights of sexuality, and once you plateau, you're fucked. <laughs> yeah, right. So you so as a dude, when we when we take it to the next point, it's like every it's like every new level. Once you come, it like seals it in as mm-hmm. like the, as like the thing. So you can't go backwards a nope. couple levels. You got to stay at that point. So unless you want to cut yourself off for like a year. Right. And then have yeah, right. Start that's back terrible. over. <laughs> yeah, no. That's not the goal. So uh Orlando, the home of The Mouse. The mouse. I mean, look, everything is corporate interest all across the board and we've let it happen and it's like you know, somebody was uh, somebody was whining on uh Snapchat story here about uh parents that don't want to give their kids candy and this and that and the other thing and like oh, yeah, I agree with the, be Halloween, so I agree with the points that he was making the points that he was making was about protecting your children and this and that and the other thing but uh, but then the other point that I want to make is yeah they shouldn't be eating kids shouldn't be eating candy I shouldn't be eating candy you shouldn't be eating candy no, nobody should be eating candy you. it's not good for you we've let we've just let these these companies decide what we eat and none of it has food in it so <laughs> you saw my claw you're worried it's coming <laughs> fear <laughs> i heard he has a choking fetish so so okay so but halloween so on halloween on, on another note because you uh i don't know you're 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 in this game you like you you know you like to there's a whole other side of you with the the, the makeup thing is a thing right you have been stalking me yeah uh so halloween's got to be a pretty lucrative business for me too. and a thing that I love. Yeah. And uh, my best friend's birthday is October 27th and uh, she's turning dirty 30 this year. So I won't be in town to do any of these fabulous oh, no. things here, but I will get to spend time with her. Yeah, where are you guys we'll going? Do something. I don't know. She's got a whole thing planned. Oh, out. I'm just like, I'm coming out and I'm in your hands. I'll do whatever oh, no you shit. want. I'll, I'm like, I'll do whatever you want. It's your birthday. I know we're we're probably going out to the desert and doing some uh, doing a little mini photo shoot out there. Nice. Oh, I thought and you were gonna say uh, for some reason like my my mind went straight to drugs. You're like we're out to the desert because people say they go well, out to I the mean, desert and they do drugs. When in Vegas, <laughs> 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 in the desert, um, I know we're doing that and we're going to uh, some haunted houses and we're probably gonna meander on the strip and see what's going on yeah. there. But well, I'll be cool. home. I come home for like. Just over 24 hours to be home on Halloween. Yeah. Hand out candy so my my house doesn't get egged. <laughs> and right. uh, going to Jersey then for yeah. Exotica for literally Exotica, the next morning. Yeah, yeah very so cool. So this, this Halloween I will get to do pretty much jack shit as far as dressing up. Yeah. It's it's fun to like prep it, you know, and have all the stuff. Yeah. I don't know why. That I normally try to do more comical things for Halloween since I as a job dress up more sexualized on yeah. a regular basis. Right. So Halloween's like, oh well this is the one time a year that I can be fucking ridiculous. Right. All the civilians, all the vanillas are dressed as like slutty, bees. slutty <laughs> mouses or whatever running around town. The slutty cookie monsters and stuff and yeah, so you, you take hot, it back actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something about that the, the the fuzzy outfit that could that could be okay. It's like she wanted to take it to a furry fetish level, but she just scaled it back. Yeah, scaled it back just a little bit, just like a just like a sexy stitch. Yeah. Ooh, sexy stitch. Since we're in the Disney capital, uh, what was your mo- uh, big Disney movie growing up? I don't know if this is gonna date you or not. Karen, I'm 32. I don't care. <laughs> um, Little Mermaid. Okay. Little yeah. Mermaid was a big one. Yeah. Um, Aristocats. Interesting. That one is a little older. That's interesting. Old. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no, no. But that's like that. That. So, uh, so what came out when we were when we were kids was basically, and it was right in the line. It would. It just went, uh, Little Mermaid, uh, Aladdin, Lion King. So those were sort of like the th- Lion King was a big one too. Yeah. So that was like the trio, and Lion King did some crazy shit that they had never done. And then I think guess Pocahontas was in there because my sister was into that. Beauty and the Beast was in there. So we had that like chunk. But I think it was like all you know. Uh, Cinderella, uh, Seven Dwarves, um, and Aristocats. The first one I saw further in back. the movie theater when I was little, little was 101 Dalmatians. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, that came out in our chunk. I never got, I never got on board with that one. I watched it and uh, never. I just felt bad that there was some crazy bitch wanting to, you know, kill all these puppies for fur. Yeah, basically, I mean, it was honestly, it was the same storyline as uh, Wizard of Oz to a sense, because that was that that whole movie is kind of about this bitch trying to kill Toto and she just like pieces out. Yeah, it goes to a magical world. 
so that nobody fucks with their dog, which I, I relate to that. Do you have animals? Yeah, you're cat lady. <laughs> I'm a crazy cat lady. Oh yeah. no shit! How, so, I've never asked anybody this. What's Uh-oh. what is the <laughs> what's the progression? How does this happen? Do you start? Where did you start? And when does this end? I had one growing up <laughs> when the Lion King came out. So Simba, so I had him the majority, just him, the majority of my life. And then you know, got to move out and start doing all this full time. And you know, it was just well, he needs a friend. Yeah. So, Found a rescue kitten, got a friend for him, and then it became like, oh, well, you got a rescue kitten. Can you find home for these four kittens? And oh, then they t- started calling you. Yeah. So okay. It's they were, little, they the were kind of strays, and then that's been more and more. It was like, okay, well, I am have this litter of kittens, and shit, this one's a runt. Nobody wants her yeah, because yeah. they think there's something wrong with her. Right. So I have two runts that nobody this wanted. <laughs> This is interesting. I wonder if this is the same. I, I'm, I'm going to try to use this as an analogy, but uh, the so guys, <laughs> guys, when they're trying to figure out those things to, to do to girls or when they're trying to like whatever uh, do the bases, mm-hmm. it's just like, you know, we're just trying to, you know, find ways to finger you, yeah. you know, and and uh, <laughs> and find ways to get in there and just try to try to increase it's like, well, you know, once you finger somebody, then. The next thing isn't as isn't as drastic. So with <laughs> with animals, you gotta just break the seal. Yeah, break the. <laughs> when you're in, it's like whatever, throw it in. You don't. Yeah. You know. uh, <laughs> so with animals, I this is what they've been doing because I was talking to somebody in in uh, Sarasota, mm-hmm. and they they're like convincing this woman to foster, and I was like, you can foster because she's like, oh, I can't have a dog, isn't that? It's like you can foster, but you gotta understand oh, once no. you start fostering. Yep. One of those dogs you're going to fall in love with and you're going to keep that dog. Or nobody is going to take it. Right. And so that's then that's the happens. other. Yeah, that's the other guilt thing. You're like, well, like I figured it out. And it's just these baby steps. It's brilliant. And and, and these dog charities and and, and, and and big respect to a lot of the dog charities. We, we raise a lot of money for them when we, when we do comedy. But uh, I think they know that that's that's, you know, people are inherently good. Uh, even though I, I feel differently. But so when you put something cuddly near them, uh, there's a small percentage of out there. There are good people. Yeah. <laughs> there's a small percentage. Yeah. But as a whole, when you look at, when you look, I mean, from, from I'm, I'm at the top of this building. So from, from a whole, when I look at all those people, you got I'm some like, good people watching down there. Yeah. It's just bad. It's just all of it's bad. But yeah, a person is good. A person is good in their heart and whatever. So you put an animal near them and there's like this, this, this uh, parental instinct pops in and you want to take care of it. So that's, that's so now you have how many cats? I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I have seven. Currently. Seven yeah. cats is never where you thought this thing was going to get to. Ew. <laughs> God, no. So Traveling is a nightmare. Are, At least they're cats and not dogs. I love dogs, but yeah. my God. <laughs> I, so are, are they fa- who comes and takes care of seven cats when my you're mother. gone? Okay. And or she I, goes or, to where you are. Or, or another industry friend will come over and... But th- what's interesting about dogs is you, when you have a dog, you can pretty much bring that to somebody else's house, and they're like, "It's fine, it'll be great to play." But cats are like, "Here's keys to my house. Yep, just go in there, just go into the zone. Just make sure nobody killed anybody just, in a 24-hour just period. Get into the yeah. cage and uh, and deal with it." Oh, this. Okay, so I don't know how this is in my head. It came around, but since you brought up cats uh, in relationship to Lion King. Uh-huh. Uh, and I guess there's some new Siegfried and Roy movies that is are supposed there? to be coming out. Really? Yeah, I think for a while there's been. So I was Google, and I don't know how old this even was. I didn't. I didn't date check any of this. So you know that Roy got attacked by one of the one lion. of the cats that shut down so the a show. Lion or was it one was of the? No, it was a tiger. It was a, like a like a. I think it was like an 800 pound Bengal tiger. The problem with the tiger game, from what I understand, is they keep trying to coax out particular colors and this and that. The other thing, so a lot of these cats are just inbred. So it's Mm -hmm. just like you can't even, uh, at that point, uh, prepare for what's going to happen and what the instincts are kicking in and so on and so forth. But I'm watching this video, and they were like, new details on, on the Siegfried and Roy cat situation. And this fucking guy says that what happened was he passed out and had a stroke and this cat picked him up by the neck and drug him to the side of the stage for for safety. 
and just by chance, because he's not a cat, and that's how they would pick up their cubs, because yeah. he's human and it's a uh, skin that that uh, that it, you know that a tourist throwed out, and that he w- that was a protective instinct that the cat was trying to do to him, and that thank God because the him tearing his throat relieved the pressure of whatever had happened for. Th- so what kind of <laughs> bullshit? I mean, it does sound like a lot of bullshit. On the other hand, I've been watching this series, I want to say it was on either Hulu or Netflix, where a guy nurses a lion cub, and it's to the point where the lion is like extremely territorial. Now I can't remember the name of the damn yeah, thing. Yeah, that's fine. But... So the lion becomes protective of the guy. Yeah, and ends up taking care of him, and he can't rele- they can't release the lion back out into the wild because right. it is too dependent on, on this gentleman. Um, so I'd want to, deep down inside of me, have some sort of shred of hope that that tiger really did give a shit yeah. that much. Still, it seem like it. He's a fucking tiger, though. Yeah. Well, I never saw the I never saw the attack video, so I don't really know. But but for this to be a thing, someone should Google it. And for get them back to, to for us. this to be a story that they, you know, it just seems like it's concocted story years later because I think they wanna they wanna work again. They're not making any money. All they had was that show, and they gotta Somebody figure. Somebody should have invested. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta figure out how to get. Yeah. Well, they invested in uh, in white leather suits, which you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, from what I understand, that's not a not a lot of return on it. It's an appreciating market, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> especially when the crotches get all burnt out. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I did, yeah. So I've seen a couple of these documentaries with these people. There's a, but but every every documentary where you own a cat or a monkey or any wild animal is the end of the documentary is you getting your face eaten. That's pretty much how every one of those stories ends. If you have a capuchin monkey, it's going to eat your face eventually. I don't think I want a monkey. Although, your cats are likely going to eat your face if you die in front of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for that day. I don't know why cat people are like, oh, so okay with this. Well, at least they'll be well fed. <laughs> I try to be healthy, you know. <laughs> There's seven of them, so I mean, you know, I should at least feed them for a week, maybe. <laughs> the, and uh, hopefully someone will find them. <laughs> I saw this gruesome movie. Uh, what is it called? It was a Netflix movie. Netflix is taking over. P.S. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> they they're putting eighty billion dollars into just movies next year, and they just pull. But they just put like eighty billion dollars. Need to get on this market. 80, eighty million. It, that's actually <laughs> uh-huh. that's not the worst idea. Uh, and they put. I think they put eighty million. They put eighty million into stand up specials this last year. Maybe it was more than that. Uh, it was an obscene number. I think they gave they gave every. I think they gave every big name comedian like twenty million. So. Yeah, maybe it was like five hundred million or something. It's insane. Oh, it's something. Yeah, I know. Every other week, I'm seeing another one post, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, and they got and they got everybody. I think what happened honestly was because because they they recently took the ratings off. They had a couple specials that were atrocious and that had like one star ratings. So they dumped the ratings and they said, "We need to repopulate this site with good comedy." Because some of the stuff that we put money into, there was this thing going around where if you gave Netflix seven grand and you shot it to their specs, they would just put it on their their site. Why so they, I there not was hear no, about this. Now? There was no checks and balances to whether or not it was good. I want yeah. I wonder if you could just do that with with uh, with, with with your content. That actually wouldn't be the worst idea. I keep shit tame enough, you know. I've seen some horrible things on there, and horrible, I mean, awesome. But I'm like, how did you put that on Netflix? Yeah, how did that get there? I, yeah, I think the checks you and balances could do on that, that was I could do that. was uh, <laughs> was low until lately. So yeah, so now you might have lost your shot. Damn it! Just get better. That's all we got to right, do. Right. We all got to get better as performers every day. Um, I forgot what the fuck my question or my point ever was. Um, Netflix is taking over the world. Yeah, and no, you saw some movie on there fairly point. recently. Hmm? Oh. Um, <laughs> Yes, thank you. Uh, where, and it's a Stephen King book that never made it to a movie, and it's uh, um, Carly, uh, I'm going to fuck up her name, and it's fucked up because I'm Italian, but Car- Carla, something with a G, I don't know exactly what her name is, I just know uh, she's fantastic, and so she is having sex with her husband, they've been having vanilla sex, and things, and things aren't going right, oh, it looks dies? like he's cheating on her, he dies on top of her. Oh. Oh yeah, she's handcuffed in the bed. After he handcuffs her, yeah, it's called like Brian's plan or something like this. And then, and then this is stupid, but it happened. They leave the door open, and so this dog comes in and starts eating the stray dog. Starts eating her husband. It sounds like a Stephen King movie. Yeah, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. And then she. And then she, well, I don't want to give away the rest of the thing, but there's some things where the dog, you know, Spoiler we, don't know alert. If, we don't know if the dog is trying to eat her or whatnot and so on and so forth. And the other thing, but some things you see on film are just so real. They stay with you. 
And that, I mean. Like having your husband die on top of you after handcuffing. <laughs> and that just seems <laughs> like, well, you probably should have had a spotter. Is that is that a is that a thing important? Do you just, is there always a spotter? Typically, when shooting um, anything that involves someone potentially getting hurt, yeah. <laughs> like bondage, extreme bondage, breath play, um, any type of suspension where the girl is typically a girl is strung up in yeah. rope or some certain states, you allow the hooks as well. Okay. Um, Florida is not one of them, <laughs> even though people do it here. <laughs> um, uh, it is a good safety measure to have an extra hand. Just and in I mean, case. Just in case. The yeah. majority of the bondage sets that I work on, there's an extra person there that is doing nothing else but you know, either an extra camera hand or an extra with wardrobe or an extra to catch somebody if they fall. Make sure nobody gets <laughs> fully suffocated <laughs> yes, to death. Yes, is making eye contact on yeah. you okay? Yeah. You all right? You good? All right, we got this. Interesting. Uh, interesting. We need comedy spotters. That's what we need sometimes. Just For hecklers just somebody, or... Just somebody to poke the audience. When no, they, take when a they look. Yeah. Yeah. We do. We do, we do. we do need that. We do need a guy every once in a while to come up and whisper in the girl's ear, you can't talk. I've never understood that for as many comedy shows I've been. A, why do you go there to talk? I you go there to listen, to laugh, to enjoy. So there's like certain stigmas that stick around. Right. So I think I think in porn, especially and I think you guys are um, victim to this with, with, with being fetish girls. And uh, I think people don't understand maybe what you do. So they have this thing in their head and they, oh, think, yeah. they think that porn is evil. They think that porn is uh, is a particular type of thing and, and it's and it violates maybe religion or whatever they think they believe, which is bullshit because they're doing the same thing at home by yeah. themselves or with their parent partner. And those are the same people that are, you know, probably cheating all these things because they're not honest with themselves about their sexuality. They might be the, you know, masquerading as a sexuality that they're not. So these are the people that are all bound up. So in the same way, I think a lot of people just have in their head that you go to a comedy show uh, and you yell at him, he yells at you, and you go back and forth. Because how many times do I try to seat somebody at a comedy show, and we can we almost get into a fight because they don't want to sit in the front, and those are the only seats left available. And so get there early. So people a lot of times think that they uh, can just go to the show, and that when they yell out, they're helping, <laughs> and they don't, and they don't get it. So that's so I think that's where that comes from. It, it, it's it's weird because. You have to almost assume that a, a comedy audience is there for the first time or the first time in a very long time, which is crazy. It's it, it's a weird thing to to not get a particular fan base around. That but I think the people that become fanboys or fangirls of comedy, you know, they'll find their guy and mm -hmm. then they'll just follow that person around. They'll follow around Bill Burr or Louis C.K. They'll follow around Chappelle. They'll follow around, you know, Rock. Um, so I think that's where that comes from. But I don't know. Again, all people are all, all my, people you know, are full of shit. Look at yeah, them. Look at them. Exactly. Look at all these fucking that. people. They're terrible. <laughs> so, so what else? So okay. So what is uh? So you got you got crazy. How do you handle all the travel? So you're going you going Vegas. You're going. I don't. I just I have a nervous breakdown every time. Do you? <laughs> I get really really stressed out with all the traveling, and I've, yeah? I've tapered off from touring as much as I have in no the shit. past. So yeah, now I specifically only go. Pretty much are four conventions now. Yeah. Vegas is just because of the friend's birthday. So what is that? So not having information, what does that do for you? That I mean, that's that's never great. Like, cause she's you don't know what she wants to do. Oh no, it's it's great because then I'll just I trust her. We've been yeah. friends for. But you a don't decade. know what to pack. You don't know what to do. You don't know what you need. It's like all that stuff. I'll borrow it from her. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be like, oh well, yeah. You want to me to break some heels? Guess what? I'm wearing yours. We're I forgot the, the girls size. have that thing. Imagine I try to borrow my buddy's sneakers when we're go you know we're going out or trying to borrow. Guys don't do that. I feel like they should. They don't I feel do like, that at you know, all. You should just you know just. No, be guys cool think everything is gay. So it's like there's always this there's always this fear of homophobia that if you wear your buddy's pants that you're gonna. It's not like you're wearing his, you know. Underwear. There's not. There's. It's not like anything. I mean, you go. You should be able to wear your buddy's clean underwear and not have to be a problem. It's just. It's a. It's a. You know. It's clean. A there's that. That word. Clean. Yeah. Yeah. You don't <laughs> want to wear your buddy's. If you wear. You wear your buddy's dirty under. That's a different situation. And then you know. I don't know whether that's sexual or not. That could be. You know. That could be a whole other thing. But yeah. I, so yeah. We don't get to do that. Ever. 
That's sad. So okay, I so that so that part's removed. So that that was the part for me that was the hardest was trying to figure out how to how to travel everywhere and have enough clothes and whatever and have to think about it. And sometimes you're, I'm living out of a bag. This and that. that sucks. So <laughs> I just said fuck it. I bought I I. <laughs> And, and I'm almost a cartoon character. I just buy the same outfit almost over and over again so that I know that on Friday night I wear this on stage. I just got to get it out and go. I don't have to think about it. It takes That's out some of the stuff. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> just wear the same thing every time. Just pretty much it's like it's like a black it's a black or gray v-neck and that's it. The vast majority of my clothes are black or gray. Yeah. So it's just like, well, everything will kind of go with each other. Yeah. Does not matter? I'll just grab something out. Done deal. At least for all the conventions, I'll be like, all right, I'm signing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So guess what? Here's an outfit for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah. It's in the bag. I'm good. Done. Black heels because they'll go with everything. <laughs> Done deal. Yeah. So what else? The, um, I don't know. What's, uh, what's, what's a big preoccupation i've been whining about orlando and corporate interest and all this shit all week but what's what's been a big preoccupation for you this week what's like what's like popping around your head i've just had to shoot customs as many as humanly possible yeah. before i leave because if i'm on the road for what close to two weeks it'll I'll, everything's gonna pile up and they're right. like where's my video where's my video yeah where's my video I'm like, so you just so uh, the normal pace that you would have them stacked at you just sped it up yeah i shot seven or eight videos in one day the other day that's crazy yeah no crazy. got up at like six o'clock in the morning started shooting by like nine ish and yeah. didn't finish until almost midnight that's crazy and then made sure everything was fully edited by the next day whilst i was shooting more content where i'm just yeah. like here i'm just gonna keep spitting them out yeah if you want something else bug me in two weeks yeah What's uh, what? What I do find interesting about that is, so I did that with I did that with this. I I did, you know, I went to Vegas and I did basically all. I didn't have any any basis of of uh, content, so I said, "Fuck it, I'm going to Vegas. I'm going to LA." Yeah. And I did 26 episodes. Damn. So once I got them all edited or whatever, it, f it felt fantastic, and it actually you know becomes streams. It became streamlined. I could just I could just edit them and get them done fast, uh, faster and faster each time. What I did find was my brain runs out of power oh, yeah. to come up with things to talk about notice that in my content by yeah, like you, you know by like that eighth video i'm like is there like a what do they call it? what do they, uh, what do they call it what writers, was I doing here? writers block <laughs> is there like a porn block yeah because i mean is there uh, a foot block? especially shooting fetish it's a lot of talking it's a lot of yeah. more mind manipulation towards the camera versus a lot of uh you know stereotypical porn you're just watching the actions the actions are happening it's right. not a lot of acting or as fetish you have to know how to act and you have to get it you, you, were, you, you, you talk about the psychology a lot like uh, get in their head that's my favorite that's honestly my favorite part about the <laughs> fetish industry is getting to know what made this what made you fetishize over this what made you yeah. covet this particular thing and um, then do you push that boundary Oh, yeah. Do you walk I to like the to edges push, of it oh, and yeah. then just fucking go past it? I love them. pushing boundaries. <laughs> my, my, my favorite thing is I fairly recently got an email uh, for a custom clip where it is very obvious that this gentleman's mother um, forced him to wear a matronly bra filled with mustard to school. What? And it probably happened during puberty. Uh, the clip entailed me as a mother bursting into the room with a white matronly bra filled with French's mustard, screaming who put mustard in my brassiere, and then humiliating and berating him wow. all point of view, telling him that you you know, you basically don't fuck with mom, mom's gonna fuck with you. I'm making you wear this bra all wow. day in school, telling the teachers, telling the principal, telling all your friends That's and humiliating crazy. you. Yeah. And I've noticed, you know, because I like to try to pick their brain a little bit and be like, Well, did this really happen to you? What yeah, yeah, yeah. made you just this is this, really why specific. is this your yeah. thing why because yeah. that's how most fetishes are like once you get really deep into them and the specifics especially shooting custom content you get to really get the psyche like something yeah. happened what and it normally happens somewhere around puberty or once yeah. you realize your sexuality and it sticks with you yeah and it really seems to be more male oriented than female as yeah. well. Like you, you, I get some fan messages or messages on Twitter from presumably females, or I meet actual ones that I know are real females at conventions, and you, you get a few peppered in there right. that are females that have 
very specific things like well the choking thing is very common yeah. for a lot of women but some women you know want to have certain things done to them certain places that they want to be bitten or touched yeah certain ways their hair pulled a lot of theirs are more generalized yeah 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 whereas the male sexuality is extremely specific in the fetish community and that's that's the other thing I, in that same world where where you know we're, as dudes we don't share clothes we don't whatever uh, as dudes we, there's still this leftover thing from when you're supposed to be John Wayne and you're supposed to just you just fucking Ride push everything down. Mm-hmm. Don't fucking tell anybody anything about what you do. Uh, you don't have emotions, you know, whatever. And then and then your sexuality is just lock the door and do the thing that you do quietly in the corner and make sure nobody runs in on you or catches you like this is like this is the society that we've created it's interesting i mean some of those things granted i've gotten some emails where i'm like whoa <laughs> yeah you need to see a therapist yeah those things should probably be blocked behind doors uh <laughs> get a lot of death fetishes interesting which i th- no, you know what i'm i'm for that i really do not that not that i think people should be killed or killing but i think there's anything that is too shielded is something that we need to to openly discuss and and create art about and all these things and death is one of those things that we don't know how to handle in yeah. this in this society. I had a buddy on my last trip die. Uh, I haven't been close to him in ten years, but he was a guy I used to perform with all the time. I still don't know how he died. Uh, everybody, everybody I knew, po- five hundred people posted about him dying and how much they missed him and this and that pictures everything I did it on Facebook. I have no idea what happened, and it's not That's in the crazy. obituary. Nobody sort of uh, who's not immediate family has said anything about how it happened or what happened. I don't know if he committed suicide. I don't know if, if he fell. I don't know if something it was an accident. He was dealing with a terminal illness. So I, th- I think death is something we, we all need to, to delve it's into. It's part of life. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's. it's it's not going away. <laughs> no, that's for sure. Um, but as far as like the the fetishism towards it too, I know a lot of girls absolutely refuse to shoot any death fetish so content. It, so death fetish means you want to watch the girl die on. So film. it's a snuff film. Snuff is when they actually do fu- do yeah. die. Someone oh, actually life, is right really there. actually murdered. Right. On set, yeah. uh, the the necro well necrophilia is sex with a dead body, but when you're shooting more of the death fetish stuff, it shows. Uh, a girl like I I have bruises right now from yeah. a shoot okay. right here where I had to be hand over mouth yeah where it's it's very specific to you have to have the thumb up here yeah like that. and then the other girl's arm was wrapped around here holding on to me yeah so I couldn't breathe you so couldn't go anywhere yeah but so well maybe th- maybe that's you know I mean that's got a tangent <laughs> that's got to do no this is a good tangent it's got I mean that's got to do with shame like what what reason would you have to need the person to be dead other than the thing that you do or sex in general is just so terrible that they c- they're not allowed to even still exist I mean this is this is our society that we've created this is you know we True just story. push everything down sex is bad all of the stuff. See, this is why I started this podcast. This is exactly why. I think I think comedians, porn stars, I think I think we see life a little bit more about the way that it is and mm-hmm. we've and we are not uh, we experience society a lot more because we, uh, I think a lot of the traveling, the fan mails, yeah. the social media, the yeah. inter- the more inter- we have more interactions with more people on a global wide scale versus your vanilla Joe Schmo, and we're trying to push the ba- and we're trying to push the boundary. I mean, good oh, comedy's yeah. pushing the boundary. Of you know, course. we say we see the thing, we see the way that it is, and we got it's not the way it's supposed to be, so we got to go past it. So it was a good episode. I feel really good about this. Um, let's plug some stuff. So you have uh, a, 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 a big affiliation with Demon Seed Network. Tell us about what you're doing there, where they can hear you there. Um, I am the co-host of Demon Seed Radio. Uh, it's at demonseedradionetwork.com. We are live Fridays around 8.15 p.m. till supposed to be 10, 10.30, but we normally go to close to midnight sometimes because oh, we like to get carried away. Content. <laughs> um, I used to run an old podcast on there called Taboo Fetish Talk, and we will be bringing that back oh, as very well. Cool potentially Wednesday evenings we're still working out times because 
Bobby wants me to do it live. Sure, sure. I don't like and doing live. <laughs> I know that they're rebroadcasting these episodes. I don't know when this one will show up on there, particularly uh, specific to this. How do they follow you on Twitter? Uh, where do you want them to follow you? Facebook, Snapchat. Fuck Facebook and fuck Snapchat. Oh, I, th- oh, I thought that, oh, I thought that was, I thought you were saying that was like a new yeah. a, like a new site like yeah. fuck fuck Facebook it we have we have our own we have our I own thing get it's sued called sued for that I would probably buy it's that called shit fuckbook.com that actually exists oh yeah, yeah what's it that does. one for? it's like it's an adult friend finder thing oh, or something interesting. like that um I did hear that there was at one time and there was this for comedy but there was at one time I heard Chad Alva tell me that there was a porn MySpace, basically, and where anybody in the industry would go on there, and, and he met various people through that, and that's actually, cool. I think he actually dated somebody through that, and I think that's how he, I think that's how he found his way into the industry. Actually, you mean MySpace wasn't porn oriented? <laughs> <laughs> I remember well, those I, yeah, days. Yeah, I, th- I thought. Yeah, I thought MySpace was just the one. Yeah. Um, I've gone through eleven Facebooks, so I don't even bother anymore. I think there's one just still block on. It and kill it. They kill it's, it. It's on. It's still active, but yeah. I can't access it. So I mean, if you follow me, if you follow Whitney Morgan on there, good for you. I'll never <laughs> talk to you because I can't get in there. Um, I so re- Twitter. I really only use Twitter and Instagram at Ms. That's M S Whitney Morgan, and um, I primarily run the social media side of Demon Seed sixty nine for Demon Seed Radio. Cool. And um, yeah, to check out Whitney Morgan, uh, check out Demon C Radio. Uh, this is the Porn Stars of People podcast. I'm Dan Fergalat. Check my schedule if you want to come see me do comedy and talk about <laughs> suicide. You know the funniest stuff that there is: death and suicide. Uh, we're on iTunes. We're on Demon C Radio Network now. We're on um, Google Play. Whatever thing you found us on, we're on the other thing too. Stitcher uh, probably. Stitcher, <laughs> something called Podbean. Uh, if you're just listening and you're a listener, uh, check us out on YouTube. We got some fun content there as well. Uh, thank you to my guest Whitney Morgan. Thank you. Uh, guys, keep listening. We'll try to bring you good content whenever we can. Thank you so much.